Hi! Loudness equals YouTube. It's me, Connor. Sea Dog. It's your boy. Me. That's me. Boy. Connor Man. Dog VA. <laughs> Let's talk about Japan today. I've been living in Japan for nearly over a year now, and I thought that maybe some of you were interested in how that's going. And not because I'm running out of video ideas, I promise it's not that. So yeah, I moved to Japan in October 15 of 2019. And, uh, boy. Was 2020 not what I expected it to be? <laughs> If you're interested in how I got here and all of that stuff, I've spoken about that in other videos and on the podcast Trash Taste, but today I just want to answer your guys' questions about how it's all been and how my daily life has changed a lot. How easily can you shit normal? Have you had any bad experiences because you're a foreigner? Wow, we really ain't playing. We're just jumping right into it today. Okay. Uh, no, not really. I mean, define what you think of a bad experience. For example, uh, people staring at me occasionally. I don't really think of that as a bad experience. You guys have seen what I do on this YouTube channel. I'm like half naked half the time. Like, I, I don't give a f about that. Sometimes I've sat down on a train uh, and people will move away. Uh, I don't really think of that as a bad experience, and I can't know 100% why they moved away. Just sometimes, all I'm saying is, right, there's two rows of seats, right? And a few times, I've sat down in the empty row of seats, maybe like one or two people. The other row is completely full, with maybe one seat free. When I sit down, sometimes that old man on my side will get up and just go to the really full side of seats. Why would he do that? I often get a lot of comments where there are people who are explaining that they think that Japan is xenophobic, etc., and they don't like foreigners. And yes, don't get me wrong, there are definitely people in Japan who hate foreigners, who are very xenophobic. But let's be honest, what country doesn't have those kinds of people? All I can say from my personal experience is that they're extremely patient, generally very kind, and very willing to help you. And I haven't experienced many bad things. Is Japan boring as all heck? Quite the opposite. Does your country have rhythm games that you can just go and play for like 10 hours? I don't think so. One of my favorite things to do in Japan is actually go to the cinemas. I think the cinemas here are so, so f***ing nice. In the UK, for a popcorn, it's like 12 f***ing dollars. What's up with that, UK? In Japan, it's like $4 for a popcorn, and I can go and watch English films with Japanese subtitles, and it's just a pleasant experience. The cinemas are clean, nobody talks, the popcorn is f***ing good. Why is it so good, Japan? You get like half and half, like caramel and butter. Oh, I'm going on a rant. Go to the cinemas. Rate your non-favorite Japanese food in Japan. If it wasn't obvious, I come from the UK. Land of the most white people on earth. We don't know food very well. And we have Chinese food in the UK. And it's not very good. I realized that Chinese food in the UK is not Chinese food. What is that? What is that food that we're eating? I had Chinese food here and it was amazing. It tastes so much better. Is it difficult for someone who loves cooking at home to do it often? Yes. I'm just lazy. I've got two. Have you been to the Obon Festival? I have realized something. Life is sadly not like anime. Obon Festival, for those who don't know, is basically a ceremony to honor those who have like passed and the ancestors, etc., etc. And most Japanese people that I asked if they celebrate it just were like, eh, no, not really. One thing that I've noticed that's different between Japan and Europe is that people in Europe they take breaks. <laughs> People in Japan, although they have tons of holidays, they don't really stop working on those holidays. And, and especially since COVID, uh, people can work from home. They're normally still doing work from home. People do not stop working here. It is crazy. What's the coolest places you've visited in Japan so far? Um, um, the, the Yaoi Cafe, go and watch that video. How different is it being there versus your idealized version of it that you imagined before you started living there? Was it everything you imagined or have you been disillusioned by some of the things after living there for some time? I did not know how much paperwork there was going to be. I knew there was going to be paperwork. I didn't know there was going to be that much paperwork. If you want to sneeze in Japan, you're probably going to need paperwork for it. There's also just a lot of rules that coming from a country like Europe is just so odd and alien to me and, and really frustrating. For example, the building where I live in right now, I have to ask permission if I want to leave this building for more than two weeks. That is weird. That is really weird. This is nothing to do with my visa or me being a foreigner. This is a, the building rules that they enforce on everyone. I'm told I could be wrong. That's what I was told. Like No Game No Life season two, I like the idea that I can just f off and that I'm never coming back. I like, I like knowing I can do that. That's comfortable for me. I know that some people will perceive this as shitting on Japan, but as I've said to a lot of people, I do think Japan is a place that is amazing to visit, difficult to live in. It is 
amazing as a tourist. You get all of the benefits with none of the downsides. You know, you don't have to worry too much about not knowing the language. The food is amazing. The public transport just works. The sights are beautiful. The people are so friendly and everything is just so good. And then you move here and the language becomes a really big barrier. You can't fill out any of the forms. Going to a Starbucks and ordering is 10 times more anxious than it should ever be. I think the one thing that just makes it frustrating to live in is just the amount of rules and the amount of paperwork to go by. In Europe, you don't really have too much to worry about in terms of constant paperwork, but there are so many things that I have to check in and, and prove that I'm doing it normally. My bank here, I have to prove that I exist every six months by going to them in person and proving that I'm not a ghost. Although, by how white I am, you could probably make an argument for that. It's also just lonely sometimes. It's really lonely not knowing the language and not being able to communicate properly to most of the people that you come across in daily life. I went to visit San Francisco back in February for the Crunchyroll Anime Awards, and I remember just the joy I got from being able to order a coffee with zero anxiety. Like, it genuinely made me happy that I could just communicate and have, like, friendly banter with someone and smile and be like, oh, you understand what I'm saying? I don't have to sit there and be like, oh, oh, I just want to make it clear that I do not hate Japan. I love Japan. I just think that you can be realistic about a country and voice your displeases without being like, oh my god, you're a hater of the country. But like any country, Japan has its problems. Every single country has its problems. Has it been easier to learn Japanese now that you've been able to use it more by living in Japan? Uh, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, there's not much to it, right? When you're when you're seeing this stuff constantly and you're hearing it all the time, you just tend to take it in more. I sadly don't have that much time to learn Japanese. I go to class two times a week for two hours. That's pretty much it. I learn kanji in my free time. The rest of the time, I'm creating content, doing the podcast, streaming. I have so much stuff that I'm on top of that I don't really get to use it as much as, say, somebody who's living here for normal work would. So yeah, who'd have thought living in Japan makes learning Japanese easier? Wow, what a shock. How much has your Japanese improved? Damn, another Japanese question. I mean, considering when I moved here, um, the first time I ever started learning Japanese was Duolingo on the plane moving here. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Not as much prep as I probably should have done. And now I know about 200 to 300 kanji. Uh, I know how to basically say most things that I want to say. I basically speak like an eight-year-old Japanese kid, although I think the eight-year-olds would actually speak a bit better than me. So maybe like a six-year-old. I'd say a six-year-old. I'm about a six-year-old. Does the gaijin card work? Like, are Japanese strict with their formalities? For those of you who don't know, a gaijin card, if you will, is a metaphorical thing where you can get away with a few extra stuff because you're a foreigner. It depends what you've f***ed up, right? If you steal someone's baby, you can't just be like, oh, I didn't know we don't steal babies here. What's up with that? We steal babies in Alaska. Come on. But if you, uh, for example, use your chopsticks, wrong, you'll be fine. How often do you actually speak Japanese in Japan? That question is reliant on how often I leave my house, which is three, just three a year. What is the hardest thing about living in Japan? 100%, without a doubt, not spending all my money on anime merch. This shit is impossible. How the f*** does anyone have money here, bro? How is actually living there versus how it's portrayed in anime? Well, I haven't been hit by a truck yet, so I can't really comment on how it is compared to anime. Any tips for me? I'll be moving to Japan in two years. The most important and biggest piece of advice I can give anyone who isn't already fluent in Japanese who's going to be moving to Japan is make friends. Friends won't come to you in Japan. You have to actively make them, and it's better to get them sooner rather than later, because there will become a point where you just kind of feel lonely in Japan. Even though I have a lot of friends here, I sometimes feel like, damn, man, I, I feel like I can't do anything here. I feel like I don't know anyone, or, you know? I feel like it's not my home, right? And it's a place where you really, really have to focus on socializing, especially in the start when you move here, and, and really going out of your way to make friends. And, and please, anyone moving to Japan, don't just think you're just going to make friends. You really have to actively do it. There are tons of places where you can make friends, though. If you're a foreigner, luckily, there's tons of language exchanges where you can meet natives here and other foreigners, and, and that's a great way. I also made a lot of friends through my Japanese classes. What are some negative things about living in Japan? Cheese. That cheese is a f joke. What is your daily routine like? So I wake up at around 9 to 10 a.m. I walk to my office. From that time, I start working. It's now 12 p.m. It's time to go to bed, and we rinse and repeat most days. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Does every Japanese girl giggle at you and cover their mouth when they try to talk to you? Yes, but they're laughing at me. Would you ever consider staying in Japan for good? 10 or more years? I don't see myself settling down here. I mean, this is just my opinion right now. That could change, but personally, 
I feel that I could easily settle down in the UK. I love this country to death, but I don't think it's where I want to, you know, raise a family or, or fully settle down. I, you know, I, I wouldn't want to raise my kid in a country where I've no fucking clue what I'm doing. Even if I move from Japan, I think I would still be spending a good amount of my time in the year here. I don't know. I'm just going to say anime titties. I don't know what to say. I've heard Japanese people tend to avoid eye contact. How true is that based on your experiences? Who the f*** is seeking out eye contact? What country do you live in where you're just like... Hi, oh, how you doing? You doing good? Don't ever look at my eyes, ever. Stop looking at my eyes. Look at my chin. Look at my chin right now. Don't, don't look at my eyes. God damn it. Does the Chinese cosplay arrive faster or is the delivery time about the same? Thank you. Somebody asked the question I wanted to answer. It's like about the same. I thought it was faster, but then some of them turn up like 10 months late. So I don't know. Was it hard getting accustomed to slash comfortable with the Japanese way of living? No, Japanese culture, the way I see it is British culture with a few extra steps. In the UK, we don't talk to anyone. I don't want to talk to anyone in the UK. Why would you talk to me in public? Don't do that. That's gross. I feel like once you have food here, you, you're, you're willing to do whatever to adjust. You just do it. You're like, as long as I can eat this food, I don't care who I have to kill. Talk about nightlife. Dude, nightlife in Japan? In rocks, bro. I like in Japan that there is more than one option. In the UK, if you want to hang out with your friends, it's either at your friend's house or at a pub. There is no in between. I refuse to go to a club. I will never go to a club in the UK. F UK clubs, they suck. There, I said it. What are you going to do about it? In Japan, at night, there are way more options of things to do than just drink your heart out. Nearly all of them you can do and drink, which is great. You can go and play ping pong, darts, pool, go karaoke, go and read manga. Go and eat and drink. That's a good one. I like that. Go and play video games. There are so many more options. Do you feel like people are friendlier towards you in Japan than in London? 100% yes. So, right, in London, when you go on the underground, right, there's like a barrier, right? And you have to tap your ticket or your card to get through this barrier, right? If you f*** it up in Japan, right, you're like, you're fumbling, dude, your card isn't working. No big deal, bro. If you f*** this up in London, you've committed a cardinal if you want to piss a person off from London immediately, go up to the ticket gate and f*** it up. Have you gotten accustomed to using chopsticks yet? Is it difficult? I didn't think it was difficult. It took like two meals. I'm curious if you can get good voice acting work in Japan. Yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, if you speak English, there's tons of jobs where they need English people. Uh, it might be cheaper for them to produce the English dub for something in Japan. I recently went to a studio to record some voice lines for a game. I can't talk about it yet. I will tweet about it when it's out, but yeah, it, it's totally viable. What are some things you miss from England? Gross England is stinky poo poo. Whales for life, man. I know this is gonna sound so f***ing dumb, but I love I love UK pot noodles. I miss them so much. Did you expect to walk around as much as you do? Yeah, I mean, I, I've been here a few times on vacation and, and it's generally the same thing. It's very plausible for me to walk up to 10 to 15 kilometers a day and that's quite normal. Sorry to interrupt this video, but this video is indeed sponsored by Shadowverse, an awesome anime card game featuring great art with a fun loving community of over 1 million daily battles. I'm sorry for talking so fast, but I just have to tell you all the amazing things. Battle real time opponents from around the world or enjoy the fully voiced story mode. Strategize with innovative mechanics that guarantee epic battles. Master eight character classes, each with unique paradigms and killer cards. Summon over 1,500 cards, each lavishly illustrated with jaw-dropping fantasy art. Did I also mention that the 18th card expansion Storm Over Reveal comes out at the end of September? So click that link in the description to download and play Shadowverse today. Perhaps some scams. This is really interesting. Japan actually doesn't have these robocalls or Indian scammers trying to call them up. And it's pretty obvious why a lot of countries like India, where all of these scam call centers are set up, they don't know Japanese, so why would they try and scam Japanese people? I remember when I first moved to Japan, I was still doing the, the prank call videos where I would prank call scammers in India. And to them, it was a totally alien concept that someone would call you up and pretend to fix your computer to get your details. It was just, they were like, wait, that's a thing? How is that possible? How do people fall for that? What? It's just not a thing here. They definitely do have scams here, any country does, but I assume that most of them are aimed at Japanese people and not foreigners. Although, uh, there's definitely like those cult people that ask you to come pray and go to a shrine in like Fuji or some stuff that just won't stop leaving you alone. If you want to go and hear more about that, I talked about it on the podcast. Link to that up there. Is karaoke as big as anime makes it out to be? Uh, yes, it, it is It is huge. And you will do it a lot if you come here. And it is amazing. It is just fun. I hate singing so, so much in front of people. 
But you put three beers in me? Oh, bro, I'm gonna go hard. I'm awful to go karaoke with because I just keep doing screamo into the mic. I love putting on fireflies and doing a screaming rendition of it. Like, I actually full on screaming. Favorite dishes. What's underrated food Westerners aren't aware of? We all know of ramen. Ramen is beautiful. Ramen's amazing, right? It looks amazing in anime. It tastes beautiful. But did you guys know there's a superior version of it that just doesn't look as nice? It's called Sukemen. Here are some pictures of Sukemen I have gotten for $8 or less normally, and they are amazing. It's basically ramen where they separate the broth and the noodles. It sounds like ramen with extra steps, but you get such a more intense and rich flavor on the noodles. It's so good. It's so beautiful. Please, if you go to a ramen shop, Make sure you try and find one that specializes in sukemen, but they will normally always have an option for sukemen on the machines. Get it, trust me. How has your experience been taking Japanese lessons while living in Japan? The hardest thing about learning Japanese is that it is the living embodiment of wait, there's more. Every time you think you understand something, there's something where they're like, okay, but hold up. What if we add another layer to it? And it's like, no, stop. The teacher is like, okay, Connor, do you understand this? And I'm like, yes. No! How experiences with toilets in Japan versus everywhere else. I f***ing love having my ass blasted by a hot stream of water, bro. Wiping is manual labor. How many other foreigners do you see there? It depends where you go. Like in every major city, there are areas where there are large foreign communities and Tokyo is no different. Generally, where I live, I don't really see foreigners. When I'm in my supermarket and I see another white guy, it's like, what? I, I look at him like, he looks at me. Oh shit. And the whole time I'm just thinking, the f*** are you doing on my turf, bro? Your experiences during the pandemic staying in Japan as a foreigner. Yeah, that kind of sucks. The world just kind of decided, let's eat out. Like any country, Japan has been hit. I know a lot of people want to tweet out and be like, oh, Japan all wears masks, so nothing's happened, bro. Japan had coronavirus, bro. Come on, man. Everything was f***ing shut for like two months. What are you chatting shit about? Yes, everyone wears masks here and they always have done, but it was still affected. And for about half a year, I didn't really leave my house much. It's starting to open back up a little bit now, but you know, you can still see the side effects. Like a lot of restaurants and a lot of stores just still won't let you in unless you're wearing a mask. And it wasn't like that before. How often do you go to tourist attractions like the Ghibli Museum and Tokyo Disneyland? I hate tourist attractions. All I wanna do when I go on a vacation somewhere or visit somewhere is eat food and rest. I don't wanna do anything else. I don't wanna go to museums. Don't ever take me to a museum. I just wanna eat the food and drink the drink. That's all I wanna do. That's relaxing for me. Let me do that. What was the most difficult time in this entire year of living in Japan? The f***ing summer. I hate this summer. I cannot handle temperatures above 21 degrees Celsius. That is this temperature for those weird Americans out there. And I, I hate talking about comparisons in heat or temperature because there's always that one asshole who lives in the Sahara Desert for some reason who's like, <laughs> Actually, it's 10,000 degrees where I live. So you're kind of a little bitch. I know this is gonna make me sound like such a little wimp and a little snowflake, but if I stay outside in the Japanese summer at its peak for more than 30 minutes to an hour, I actually start to feel faint uh, and I need to constantly be drinking water and stay in shade, like a f stealth game. I'm like, there's a bit of shade over there. I have two seconds to run to it. What's it like being the tallest man there? Bro, there are some tall mother in Japan. You go on the train and these 16 year olds are like 6'5". What's been the biggest challenge overall? Language should probably be number one, but I'd say deciding what I'm gonna eat every day. When everything is so good, how do you decide? It's, it's too hard. Does water taste different? That's a good question. Yes, it does. I remember when I first moved here, I had uh, tea. <laughs> I sound so British. <laughs> I had tea shipped to me from my parents. I, I called them. I was like, Mother, listen, I need tea. Send all the supplies you have. I need it now. So I got tea and I made a cup and I, I had a sip and I was like, huh, it tastes like shit. Why does it taste like shit? I realized it's the water. It's really hard, the water, uh, which, you know, you might like that in your water, you know, all that lime scale and shit. I didn't really like that in my water. So I bought a purifier and now my tea tastes great. Would it be worth visiting for a while if given the opportunity? Yeah, obviously. Come on, man. Anime thighs. I'm interested in the cost of living there. How much do you usually spend on food and rent and stuff like that? Well, it's about a thousand dollars on rent. Uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe like ten dollars on food, depending on what you're doing. And, uh, it's about, you know, two hundred dollars a month on JoJo merch, at least. Uh, that's, that's a requirement. That's actually in the must, must be box. Uh, yeah, this is my Star Platinum figure. Pretty nice, right? Unfortunately, I get a lot of emails, people asking me, hey, how do I move to Japan? Bro, you think I know? I'm a f***ing YouTuber, I don't know shit. I guess people assume that I know what I'm doing in my life. <laughs> 
Come on. Unfortunately, when it comes to immigration and moving to Japan, I am the exception and not the rule. Most people aren't going to be coming to Japan uh, as a YouTuber. It's a very specialized uh, niche kind of field where they don't need that many of them. No one needs that many of them. <laughs> if you want to move to Japan, not teaching English, you are going to need some very, very specialized skill where you are at the top of your field in to warrant them bringing you over and catering to you and doing everything for you in Japanese. Otherwise, unfortunately, you're gonna need to know Japanese. Uh, fluently. And I'm, I'm not talking watashi wa anime desu, you know, like you actually need to know Japanese. And let's say I were to lose my visa, there's only two ways I can keep living here. I will fluent Japanese and get a job, or I go marry some Japanese women. So if anyone would like to apply who's Japanese, I'm taking applications for a green card. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm not that horny. I'm kidding. I have Jojo. What are the coolest places you've visited in Japan so far? I'm obsessed with ryokans. I love onsens. I'm obsessed with onsens. I want any excuse to get naked in a hot bath with my bros. I'll, I'll, any of them I'll go. So just going around all the great onsens in Japan when I had the chance to before the world started ending. Thank you for that, by the way. Uh, it was amazing. And getting to experience these small villages with these really just nice and pleasant people was just great. Enough answering your questions. I want to just talk about my feelings, Japan, and my plans for the channel so you guys know what the f is happening. I didn't know what was going to happen when I moved here. As I said in my video, I moved here on a whim. People gave me shit for that. I'm, I'm dead serious. I did move here just because why not? Um, <laughs> and I'm so glad I did. You know, we, we've started doing some crazy stuff on the channel, you know, like the host club video. I'm so proud about um, stuff like that. And there's more of that coming and I'm getting more settled in and getting more connections. And, and you guys are going to be seeing more videos like that in the future, making content with your friends as well. And we started the Trash Taste podcast, which is just amazing. And there's so many more cool things planned for that. Basically, now that I've settled in fully, uh, I do feel like I could be here for a while, you know? I don't know how long. Uh, and I'm sure maybe in a year, my opinions might change. I might hate this place. Might have lost all my money to JoJo merch and got to go back. <laughs> but for now, I'm really enjoying it. And I hope that you guys are, man. I hope that you guys are enjoying this. Um, I've started streaming a bunch more on Twitch as well. That's been so fun. So if you guys do want to go and uh, follow me on Twitch and, and watch the shenanigans I get up to there, go and do so. I, I, I really love Twitch. I don't know. It's 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 weird. I, I feel like my life has been flipped upside down in every single way. One thing I, I do know is that I really just don't want to leave Japan until I've, I've got a really good handle on the language. I just want to get to a point where I won't forget it, right? And that it'll be like second nature to me. That's what I want. I really, really want that because one, how, how badass would it be to say I can speak three languages? Isn't that cool as shit? But also, you know, I really want my parents to come visit me. Unfortunately, you know, they haven't been able to, uh, but I want to show them around, right? I, I want to, I want my, my mom to be proud of me, right? I want her to be like, come on, mom, I can read that for you. No problem. Let me translate, right? I don't know. <laughs> I just, I want my family to be impressed with me, man, because my family just thinks I'm a permanent crackhead, which is, you know, it's not wrong. I know on the channel, I haven't really made a big deal about me moving to Japan. I just kind of drop videos around Japan and that's kind of it. And I really didn't want it to become like, hey man, I'm a guy who lives in Japan. That's my personality, wacky, eh? <laughs> I'm interested to know if you guys want more Japanese influence on this channel or you like how it is right now, where it's kind of like a balance where it's, you know, we get some Japan things, but it's mainly dumb shit that Connor does. And finally, is there anything that you guys want to see me do in Japan? If so, leave it in the comments down below. But. That's all I have for today, my beautiful, beautiful weebs. I hope you guys have a great day. Go and check out some of my other videos up there. I've been your boy. You've been the viewers. I love you. Kiss your homies goodnight. Have a great day. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share it around. It helps a lot. All right, bye. Bye, gamers. Bye.